good YouTube. It's your boy Wavy Boy CJ Slash Corn. I'm back with another vid, man. Y'all been doing so. The vids been doing so good. What I don't post it five videos in a row, and they all got like over a hundred views. So I'm gonna I'm keep I'm gonna keep going with the consistency. So and I got my cousin right here. Um, we're gonna be reacting to SpongeBob's darkest episodes. Okay, I haven't seen this vid before, but. Let's see what let's see what is cracking. Let's see, let's see. So one course meal is one of the most unsettling SpongeBob episodes, but it's not the only one. Watch till the end and see for yourself how dark a cartoon can get. The episode One Course, one meal, course meal starts out with Plankton attempting to steal the secret formula, and he actually gets very close to getting it. That is until Pearl shows up. Plankton is terrified of Pearl because whales are known for eating plankton, something Plankton is aware of. So he runs back to the chum bucket terrified, which gives Mr. Krabs an idea. Later on, Plankton is taking out the trash, but Pearl was in the dumpster, waiting. With no hesitation, he runs back inside the chum bucket, even more scared than he was before. He but why? Even nails I will get it. Shut. He runs all the way to his lab and hides. Just as he's there, all alone and scared, Pearl finds him. But she's not there to talk stuff out, something she herself states. So he runs away and alerts Karen. But after getting her, Pearl was no longer there. Karen doesn't believe Plankton, so she just leaves him there. This goes on for two weeks. Two this weeks? takes a huge toll on Plankton, both physically and mentally. He's too afraid to step into the light because the whale might see him. Therefore, he refuses to leave his room even to eat. Plankton stays alone in his room, horrified and crying to himself, which brings great joy to Pearl. This constant fear of death has even reached Plankton's fear dreams. Fear of... Oh! Shows us how I didn't even... At first, I was, like, so confused, but at the beginning of the video, they did say that pearls, you know, whales eat plankton. So, bro, scared of dying. That's crazy. I'll be terrified, too. Much he's thinking about all this. In his dream, he's running away from Pearl. <laughs> I haven't mentioned this, but earlier on in the episode... Plankton mentions how his ancestors were eaten by a whale, Damn. which I believe sparked Plankton's That's fear. Tough. Anyways, yeah, in his I'll dream, be scared too. Plankton is running through a corridor whilst being chased by a bloodthirsty whale with no way out. In his dream, Plankton gets eaten by Pearl, <laughs> and as he's digested, he meets his ancestors. No! Plankton's lower half then dissolves in the. I ain't gonna I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda messed up. Stomach that's acid. messed up. After this, he wakes back up. You might expect him to act relieved that his dream wasn't real, but he's not. He has finally had enough and breaks into tears once more. Car, it's baby. clear he can't live like this anymore. We then see Pearl laughing at Plankton, but it's not Pearl that's doing this. We find out that it's for the Mr. Past Krabs days, in the costume. Mr. Krabs was dressed as Pearl and was the one torturing Plankton. There's no way he didn't As notice said, that was a costume, constant though. Constant encounters with Pearl have taken a toll on Plankton. He knows this is no way to live, so he tries to get rid of his situation. He leaves the chum bucket and goes to the middle of the road. If you haven't guessed yet, Plankton is attempting to- He commit- He- You get what he about to do? What? Kill sir. He attempted to commit suicide. What the freak? No, 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 because this is actually sad. Kill himself. SpongeBob sees Plankton and tries to encourage him not to kill himself. He says that everyone Yo. is afraid of something. Oh my even God. Even Mr. Krabs. SpongeBob then reveals Mr. Krabs' fear. Come on. <laughs> SpongeBob is snitch. <laughs> and proceeds to tell Plankton that it was Mr. Krabs dressed as Pearl this entire time. Which gives Plankton an idea. Wow, SpongeBob. Plankton confidently walks in the Krusty Krab and traps Mr. Krabs with his biggest fear, which are mimes. But what just the as fuck? Plankton is having That's so his random. Home, a group of whales show up, <laughs> which once again scares Plankton into hiding. This episode highlights this the relationship between Mr. Nail. Krabs and Plankton. In this episode, Mr. Krabs has no heart. Although Plankton. Okay, we're in a different episode. Wait. No, we still on episode one. Plankton is usually the evil one. What Mr. Krabs did didn't provide him with anything he can gain. He did it only because he could. He basically tortured Plankton for two straight weeks and not only left him to die, but he laughed about it too. 
This was possibly the most evil thing Mr. Krabs has ever yeah, done. Yeah, hang on, that was crazy. This episode touches on various mature subjects, but the next episode dives even deeper into them. The oh, next episode okay. on the list is Are You Happy Now? Oh my god. Uh. Now. Are you happy now? You happy Starts now? out with SpongeBob reading a book and laughing to himself. This irritated Squidward, so he takes the book away from SpongeBob to see what he's laughing at. The book was the Krusty Krab work, work schedule, schedule, which didn't make much sense to Squidward. So he asks SpongeBob what's so special about it. He explains that it's his happy book because all his happiest memories happened in the Krusty Krab. Oh my Krab. God! What the freak? Then asks Why you Squidward got so many? what his happiest memory was like. After thinking about it for a while, Squidward realizes that he doesn't he have don't a happy memory. None. Squidward doesn't seem to mind at first, and just returns to working the register. But SpongeBob, on the other hand, felt sad for Squidward, and asked him how could he live without a happiest memory. Squidward tries to ignore him, but SpongeBob's question still sticks to him, which caused him to cry, <laughs> which was then joined by SpongeBob. After a bit, Spongebob takes it upon himself to help Squidward find his happiest memory. Squidward don't even the like that job, though. The first to give though. Squidward a happy memory was going to a music show. At first, Squidward was actually enjoying himself until Nat no-scoped Squidward in the eye. Ooh. Of course, this wasn't the memory Squidward was looking for. Oh my god. Spongebob decides the next best thing would be to take Squidward to an art museum. But Squidward wasn't as happy as you'd expect. He was disappointed that none of his art was at the museum. But just then, he sees one of his statues, and people actually like it. Squidward is overwhelmed ass. with joy and says that this is his happiest memory. But luck struck Squidward <laughs> once again, which made Squidward start oh losing hope in all of this. But this doesn't stop SpongeBob. The next activity SpongeBob picks was to take Squidward on a hot air balloon. But what SpongeBob didn't know was that Squidward is afraid of heights, which made Squidward start to freak out. So SpongeBob pops the hot air balloon in an attempt to go back to the ground. What the freak, SpongeBob? Worse, but that still, was so stupid. They sort of managed to land safely on Mount Bikini. For SpongeBob, this was seen as a potential happiest memory since they're the first to ever land on Mount Bikini. But at this point, Squidward doesn't even care. Much to Squidward's luck, SpongeBob accidentally plants the flag, which was handed to them by another climber on Squidward's foot, Ooh. which eventually led to an avalanche. Unlike the beginning of the episode, Squidward doesn't cry, but the sadness he's feeling is even more visible. Squidward has finally come to terms that there's no escaping his miserable and sad life. I know, it's like this is where ass. the episode takes a turn. We start to see a more depressed Squidward. Oh, he became depressed. Scenes. But SpongeBob is still ambitious and tries to get in touch with Squidward in many different ways. While SpongeBob is attempting to get a hold of Squidward, we see the conditions Squidward is enduring, showing us the state of both his environment and his mental health. Damn. But eventually, SpongeBob bad, does bro. get a hold of Squidward against his wishes and tries one final oh time God, to give Tatum Squidward his happiest memory. He takes Squidward to the Krusty Krab, and once he's let out, we see SpongeBob's grand scheme, which was to host Squidward a party. A birthday party? But no guests wanted to go. So SpongeBob built a bunch of other SpongeBobs <laughs> from paper mache. Yep, that's it. Not much thought. SpongeBob is so freaking nice. You see your friend doing this for you? Be honest. Oh yeah, but not that much of that. <laughs> SpongeBob is a W man. Put into planning this party, but that's not all. Squidward looks around and all he sees is SpongeBob. He sees the face that put him in this situation, and he can no longer take it. Crashed out. Squidward starts violently ripping oh apart God. the figures SpongeBob built, and the episode ends. This is not a happy ending. Which it was. It did. Because in the last episode, Plankton sort of had it coming, but Squidward rarely does anything morally wrong. This episode touches on the topic of depression and shows us the effects it could have on a person. In the final part of the episode, we see how Squidward's mental health has completely deteriorated and how insane he has become. And by far the darkest SpongeBob episode in the entire series is Graveyard Shift. The episode starts with Squidward closing the Krusty Krab, but just as he's doing so, a customer shows up. 
but Squidward isn't having it, so he tries to get the customer <laughs> to go away. I think that I remember this episode. Says, well, fine, if you don't want my money. Which, of course, alerts Mr. Krabs. For some reason, Mr. Krabs didn't know that if he left the Krusty Krab open for longer, he would get more money. And once he learned this, that is exactly what he did. Night left shift. SpongeBob and Squidward alone to take care of the Krusty Krab. Squidward is obviously disappointed by this. But SpongeBob, SpongeBob on the other happy. hand is very excited to be working the grill at night, and he makes sure everyone else knows this. Once Squidward has enough of SpongeBob's constant blabbering, he decides it's time to have some fun. So he tells SpongeBob a story, a tragedy which according to Squidward was all over the news. The story goes like this. There was once a fish. He was a regular guy like most other fish in Bikini Bottom. He used to be a fry cook like SpongeBob, but he was clumsier. And one day, just as this fish was chopping up Krabby Patties, he accidentally pushed his hand a little too far and his arm was gone. He started to bleed and had to cover up his wounds, so he chose to replace his arm with something else. He quickly picked up the closest thing to him, which was his rusty spatula, spatula? and stuck it up. But thankfully, Ew. he survived. But one day, possibly the same one, he crossed the street and was ran over by a bus which killed him. And on the day of his funeral, he was fired. And now every Tuesday night, he comes to the Krusty Krab using the bus. Hold on. <laughs> Get a fire or your funeral day is crazy. Bus that ran him over to seek vengeance. Squidward mentions three signs that signal the approach of the hash slinging slasher. First, the lights will start to flicker. Oh yeah, I then, remember this episode. The phone will ring, but there'd be no one on the other side of the line. Then, he slowly what crosses the, the street and taps on the door of the Krusty Krab three times. Then, he slowly opens the door and creeps inside, step by step. And then, he gets you. Obviously, this story was made up by Squidward to scare Terrified, SpongeBob, bro. something he himself admits. After Squidward has his fun, things go back to normal. But now, Squidward is starting to get scared, and the environment around him is not helping. To try mm -hmm. and remain calm, he starts complaining and says that it's stupid that he's working here and no one would want to eat a Krabby Patty this late at night. But just as he finishes, the lights start to flicker. SpongeBob, he thinks that scary SpongeBob guy. is doing this to mess with him. But we come oh, to find out SpongeBob. that neither of them were touching the light switch. Squidward then blames the poor circuitry of the place, but just as he's complaining, he receives a call on the phone. But once he picked up, there was no answer. Squidward has no doubt left in his mind. This is the slasher. He tried to tell SpongeBob. But SpongeBob thinks that Squidward is doing this to keep him entertained. But then, a bus arrives just across the street of the Krusty Krab. <laughs> SpongeBob didn't know the bus ran this late. Turns out, it doesn't. The fish that stepped out was a dark figure, and instead of his left arm was a spatula, fitting the description Squidward gave on the killer. Squidward screams in terror upon seeing this fish, what the freak? which is then followed by SpongeBob after he realized that that fish was the Slasher. The Slasher walks up to the <laughs> door and using his metal hand, knocks three times, and without hesitation, he steps inside and slowly walks to the counter. Squidward and SpongeBob have accepted their fate, and they lie in Squidward's boat waiting for the Slasher to come and finish them off. But it turns out that he wasn't the Slasher, he was just a kid. The episode ends on a good note with the characters laughing together about the situation. So, there you have it. The three darkest Spongebob episodes. I'm not gonna lie. I think the first episode, the first one, was the darkest. Out of all of, out of all two. What do you think? Mm. First. Yeah, the first one. The first one is, was the darkest. This one, I remember this episode, so it's not that bad. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the vid, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see y'all hopefully tomorrow with another one. It's your boy Corn. I'm out. Peace.